Welcome to Fight City NYC. Check us out on the web at www.fightcitynyc.com. Uh, friend us on Facebook. Become a fan of our page. My name is Ben Chan, and to my left, I've got Aris Pena. We work for HBO CopyBox. We do Punch Zone. We are the sexiest statisticians in boxing. Uh, I'd like to invite all our fans and viewers to call in at 212-757-1483 uh, with your questions and comments. Uh, Aris, let's get to uh, this past weekend's fight. Uh, it was a really big, lightweight fight between Brandon Rios and Miguel Acosta. Um, early candidate for fight of the year. Brandon Rios, uh, the fight went 10 rounds. Uh, it was back and forth. Acosta won the first 10 rounds, and Rios worked his way back into the fight, very much like kind of his stablemate, Antonio Margarito. Took a lot of punches. You know, Acosta showed why he's won f 19 fights in a row, uh, why he's been, I think, two or three un unbeaten prospects. And, um, and Brandon Rios kind of absorbed all the punishment, you know, took all the punches, and came back and knocked Acosta out in the 10th round. What did you think of the fight? Excellent fight. Excellent, excellent fight. Brandon Rios um, became a star overnight in that fight, you know. Uh, it was a very tough challenge for him. Miguel Acosta, like you said, is a very disciplined, um, highly skilled fighter who, you know, somewhat underrated. He's a little bit under the radar, but like you said, he's had 19 fights in a row undefeated. He's um, knocked out Paulus Moses and, um, and Arbarno and Tillian in his last two fights before that. So he's a legitimate <coughs> guy, a legitimate lightweight. And Brandon Rios, for the first five rounds, it looked like it was a mismatch right. in Acosta's favor. I mean, Rios didn't know what to do. He was getting smacked around. Acosta was landing beautiful punches. He hurt Rios with a body shot, and it was looking all downhill, but one thing you got to give Rios is that, one, he has a great chin. Two, he's very, very strong. And three, he has willpower like you haven't seen in years. It reminds you almost like you said, Antonio Margarito or Toro Gatti-esque, Mickey Ward. And he broke through. His will overcame Acosta's skill. And um, Acosta, who... You know, you don't really, I'm not really sure if he expected it to be, like, Rios to come on that strong. I know he expected a tough fight, but Rios' you know, will just overpowered him. That jab that he knocked him down with, it wasn't the most powerful punch, but Acosta was just breaking down piece by piece, and Rios came through with an amazing victory. Right, and he, Acosta had only been down on the canvas two or three times before yeah, that yeah. fight, and he hit the canvas twice versus Rios. So that says a lot about Rios' I guess, power, his punching power. Yeah, he's a very, very strong, rugged, rugged fighter, one of the you know, most rugged lightweights in the world. Right, so it looks like, you know, I'm not sure whether his talent has hit the ceiling, which is, is this as good as Brandon Rios is going to be? Is this, are these the type of fights that we're always going to get out of Brandon Rios, or is he going to be able to adjust and fight smarter and That's, stretch his career um, out? You know, I don't think Rios is the type of guy that he is what he is. I think what you see is what you get with him now. I don't see him adjusting and becoming a boxer or anything like that. Brandon Rios is the type of guy, just be happy you have him for how long you have him right now because he's only going to last a few years before he fizzles out because of the punishment some, you know, he takes. And that's just the way it is, you know. And besides that, he's unfiltered. He doesn't care what he says. You know, sometimes it gets him in trouble like he did about Freddie Roach. Right. But he's a fr breath of fresh air for boxing in terms of attitude, style, and how he fights. Right. So it looks like that we'll be hearing more of that high-pitched scream that he does uh, yeah, at the end probably. of every fight. So enjoy it while you can, folks. Brandon Rios. <laughs> On the undercard of the show, of that card that was on Showtime, we had uh, Antonio DeMarco's defeat uh, Reyes Sanchez, a guy who had never fought out of outside of Mexico. He won a 12-round decision. Now this was kind of DeMarco's comeback fight, even though he fought one fight after losing to the uh, the Venezuelan fighter um, Edwin Valero, the late Edwin Valero, the later Edwin Valero. You know. Um, yeah, it, it was a really sloppy fight. It was fun to watch, uh, but I think that people were expecting more of DeMarco's. Mm -hmm. um, it went. It went the full ten rounds. I mean, if if um, if Sanchez had anything, uh, any type of punching power, it would have made the fight interesting. And he kept on kind of just. Pushing. The only thing interesting was his hair. I thought. Right. Right. I really. <laughs> yeah. I really like the the pink and the white mohawk. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the only and he, he kept on bullying uh, DeMarcos into the ropes and flailing away and hitting him. But I mean, he didn't have any punching power on him. So, um, you know, it was it was fun to watch. I'm not sure. Uh, what this shows, except that DeMarcos maybe will never get back to the level he was before he fought Valero? You know, that's... DeMarco is what he is. Another guy, too, he's, he's pretty skilled, but he's somewhat limited. And you don't think he, you know, he's going to be a contender, but I don't ever see him reaching that peak to become lightweight champion. He certainly won't be a Juan Manuel Marquez. I'd favor Brandon Rios over him. And um, Miguel Velasquez, the other champion, the little I really wouldn't want to see that fight because Velasquez is actually really boring, but I think Velasquez will beat him, too. So... You know, DeMarco and Humberto Soto is his cousin, so those two will never fight. <coughs> on record. Right. And so I think we've seen the peak of DeMarco. He's a good fighter, and um, he's lucky he has Gary Shaw as a promoter because Gary Shaw gets some Showtime dates. Right. 
Okay, let's talk about the lightweight division then. Uh, right now, according to the ring, Juan Manuel Marquez is the champion. Um, according to the ring, and this was just printed this, I uh, just looked at this afternoon, they still have Mac uh, Miguel Acosta as number one, though. I think that's going to change uh, due to yeah. his defeat. Um, Brandon Rios is number five. Uh, before Brandon Rios, uh, number four, you have Ali Funica, who we haven't seen in a, in a little while. Mm -hmm. And then at number three, we have Michael Casillas. Number two, we have Humberto Soto, who's in action soon, versus uh, Antillion. Um, so, what do you? Uh, is there anybody in this division that can that you think legitimately has a chance to beat Juan Manuel Marquez? You know, I'm I'm not too sure. You know, unless Marquez, he's getting older every day. It's not like he's getting any younger. Right. And um, I don't see Marquez last that much longer as a lightweight. I mean, where are going to be the challenges for him? He's never going to fight Brandon Rios because of the Golden Boy top rank war. Mm -hmm. um, Humberto Soto would be a good fight, but I think he beat Soto. You know, he beat Antillion. He already beat Juan Diaz twice. There's not really many guys out there for Marquez to fight, so I see him moving up. But at the same time, right now, um, you know, Rios might be able to get to him in a, about a few more fights or so, but right now I don't see it. Mm, mm. So that's, that's what the lightweight division is now. Let's the only guy also, I mean, you meant to, I forgot, failed to mention uh, Robert Guerrero. He beat, you know, he'd have a legitimate shot, I think, mm. because of his style and how he boxes, stuff like that. But I still think uh, Marquez would beat him at the moment. Right, right. He's just Marquez. You know, I've learned never to count this guy out. I no. mean, whenever I think this guy is too old, he comes back and he beats some guy you know younger than him. So um, until it happens, I don't think I'd ever bet against Marquez unless no. he was in the ring of Pacquiao. Then, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> then especially at welterweight. Right, right, right. <laughs> so let's move 